we are still missing one speaker here. Um, Professor Fanshi says she does not have the button join virtual session here. Is it uh, any chance to check uh, whether she is properly registered? She seems to have logged in, but possibly doesn't see the, the virtual session button. I think she is registered for, for the conference, uh, Professor Fan, I think. She doesn't seem to be locked in, I understand. Do you have any chance to see whether she is locked into the system? I'm gonna ask. Mm -hmm. I have an email from her and so... Yeah, thank you very much uh, all together and welcome uh, to this um, session 14, uh, which is about uh, greenhouse gas reduction strategies and future electricity markets. Um, thanks uh, for participating here uh, at this unusual uh, time. And uh, yeah, I'm sorry that we have uh, one or the other technical problems, but uh, that's not uncommon with such a large uh, online conference. Um, we have, uh, in principle, four presentations, but still struggling with one uh, speaker entering the system. Um, the first presentation will be given by Benjamin Lux. Um, it is about uh, e-fuel imports from the MENA region as an option for decarbonizing Europe's energy system. Um, Followed then, uh, in principle, uh, by uh, the still missing speaker, He Bowen, uh, long-term power expansion model with intermittent renewable energy. 
a multi-stage stochastic optimization based on nested benders decomposition. The third presentation will be given by uh, Katja Franke about the importance of electricity grids and sector coupling for decarbonizing the Chinese power system. And finally, uh, Jinhua Xu would give uh, a presentation on consumer preferences for electric vehicles charging infrastructure based on text mining methods. And I hope uh, that uh, technology will be with us and we will be able to well follow uh, these uh, presentations. Um, we will start with uh, Benjamin's uh, presentation. Benjamin, the floor is yours. You have um, 20 minutes uh, for the presentation, and then we will have about uh, five to 10 minutes discussion. Please um, get us start. Yeah, thank you for the introduction. I hope you can see my screen now and hear me well. Yes, everything is fine. Okay, so I can welcome you to our little journey to the Middle East and North Africa in the year 2050. We're going to look um, at the hydrogen generation potential in this region and uh, its future here. And we're going to compare it um, to a European supply of um, hydrogen. But before we jump to the final results already, um, let me start with a little um, motivation and introduction of what we're going to see um, in, this present, in, the, in these upcoming 20 minutes. Um, as Wolfgang already said, the overall objective of this um, session is um, how to uh, prevent global warming to preferably, or how to, how to achieve um, limitation of global warming to preferably 1.5 degree Kelvin. And um, this goal was set in the Paris Agreement of 2015 um, by a, a large number of states. And um, in response to this treaty, the European um, Union agreed to um, achieve greenhouse or to aim for greenhouse gas neutrality um, in the year 2050. The question is how to reach um, this ambitious goal um, within the EU. Um, I guess there are probably two strategies which are quite commonly accepted. The first one is to increase energy efficiency. The second is to uh, substitute fossil fuels with uh, renewable energies. However, there's still some processes and applications which are, which are quite difficult to decarbonize. Among them is uh, long distance transport. So for example, aviation or international ship transport um, or uh, industrial processes uh, such as steel production. And there may be some more. And for these processes, it is, it is difficult to use um, renewable electricity um, directly. And the question is, how can these uh, processes be um, decarbonized anyways? And one possibility is the use of um, hydrogen, green hydrogen. So this is hydrogen that is produced using uh, renewable electricity or its uh, derivative uh, or its derivatives. So um, synthetic fuels such as synthetic methane or um, yeah, synthetic methanol. Um, ho however, in order to produce these um, carbon neutral synthetic fuels, a lot of electricity is required. And the question is where this electricity um, should come from. Um, and for Europe especially, um, the question is whether there are other regions in the world where these fuels could be produced more cheaply and then export it um, to the European Union. And today we're going to look at a region that is often discuss discussed in this context, which is the MENA region. And um, we are going to ask the question whether um, hydrogen exports from the MENA region to Europe are feasible. To answer this question, we used um, a uh, energy system model, which is called Enatile. 
the model aims at uh, supplying electricity, heat, and hydrogen as cost efficient as possible. And um, to achieve um, this cost efficiency, we, we are using a cost optimization, which takes into account um, the investment and dispatch of um, relevant infrastructures. So um, yeah, as this is on the supply side of energy system model, we are taking into account renewable power plants, storage systems, uh, transmission grids um, for the heat supply, heat pumps uh, for the hydrogen supply, electrolyzers. Um, on the left side, you can see a graphical representation of the model, and you can see that in principle we have uh, three big uh, subsystems. So this is the electricity system, the heat system, which will be not used for the MENA calculations, but as we're comparing them to European ones, um, you can show that here anyways, and the hydrogen system. And these subsystems, and they are able to interact. And um, we, yeah, we do a cost optimization of these subsystem systems in order to um, meet exogenously given, given heat or electricity demands. For hydrogen, we use a somewhat different um, approach. Here we ask the system, um, we give the system a sales price for hydrogen that um, is external to the model. And we ask the model, how much hydrogen would you um, provide us if we offer you um, the sales price and the sales price then reduces the cost function of this optimization. We do this for um, many different um, hydrogen sales prices and um, thereby we generate a hydrogen supply curve. This, the model covers uh, generally Europe and the MENA region in an hourly um, resolution and today we are only looking at the year 2050 which is synonymous for greenhouse gas neutrality in this context. One important um, or set of input parameters are the uh, renewable power potentials um, and that's why we're going uh, yeah, these are important for the cost optimization and that's why we're looking at the modeling here in a bit more detail. Um, in principle, we subdivide the, the, the region we are looking at. Uh, here you see now uh, Europe as an example, but today we are looking at the MENA region in, uh, onto a um, tile grid um, with, at length, with an edge length, length of 6.5 kilometers. And on each of these tiles, we can combine different sets of data. So we use land availability data we use um, real weather data and we use um, technology specific um, data for renewable power production. So for PV plants, for wind plant, power plants, uh, for CSP plants. And these different data sets are combined on these on every single tile. And that's how we can find out um, how much power can be generated on one of those tiles and what would it cost. For the optimization, we aggregate these, um, these tile information into these kinds of potential curves, cost potential curves. Um, and this is then uh, afterwards used in um, the optimization, but you're gonna see a example of that uh, shortly. As I said, the um, Topic today is the hydrogen production potential um, of the MENA region. And we are looking at the countries that you can see here on the left. And in fact, we uh, you can see uh, besides the, the borders of the MENA countries, you can also see those um, more horizontal stripes. Um, so we subdivided um, the, the MENA countries into stripes of uh, a length of 250 kilometers. This is because um, we want to uh, allow hydrogen production in coastal regions only um, the, um, because the, the MENA region overall is quite arid and water supply is scarce. And uh, so we are using seawater for the hydrogen production, but want to allow um, the power generation all over um, the countries. 
and um, so uh, electricity that is um, that is produced in the back country, for example, in Nigeria, will then be um, transported towards the coast, um, where uh, the, the hydrogen is produced um, via a, a electricity grid, and the grid representation is shown here in, with the blue lines. Besides producing hydrogen, we are also assuming that um, these countries have a um, electricity demand on their own, and um, that, that has to be met in every single hour. And overall, for 2050, we assume that would be um, for the region that you see here, 2,300 terawatt hours. As we want to have a decarbonization option or a greenhouse gas neutral option, we allow um, renewable electricity generation only for um, this future same year 2050. And uh, yeah. Hydrogen that is produced in these countries and could be that, that could be exported um, to Europe is um, penalized with a, a flat pipeline surcharge from MENA to Europe of 21 euro per megawatt hour. That is irrespective of where the hydrogen is produced here. So uh, yeah, that is quite a um, broad assumption. And the 21 euro. Um, correspond to about uh, 3,000 kilometers of pipeline transport. Now let's have a look on the results. Here you can see um, the result of the renewable potential calculations for solar PV. Um, uh, the, the coloring shows um, the levelized cost of electricity production for um, the different uh, tiles. And we see that due to low installation costs, or we will see that due to low installation costs, solar PV is the least expensive power generation technology in the MENA region with um, a generation cost between 28 euro per megawatt hour and 51 euro per megawatt hour. And as the, the coloring is quite uniform, you, we can see that there, there's very small um, difference, uh, regional differences in, in generation costs for solar PV. The overall cheapest PV potentials are located in Egypt, Libya, and uh, Jordan. On this next slide, we see a equivalent um, representation of the CSP generation potential, um, which is a bit more expensive than uh, that of PV. Generation costs uh, range between 47 euro per megawatt hour and 88 euro per megawatt hour. And uh, the, the cheapest 90% of the CSP generation potential has LCOE uh, below 55 euro per megawatt hour. So it's still a cheap um, generation option. The regional distribution of the CSP potentials um, tends to show a stronger north south gradient than PV. Um, this is because a CSP. Um, depends more strongly on direct uh, solar irradiation. The last um, map of this kind is the gener electricity generation potential of uh, for, for, wind, for wind onshore. We see that compared to the solar generation technologies, the wind potentials exhibit higher generation costs uh, levelized cost of electricity generation range between 43 euro per megawatt hour and 150 euro per megawatt hour. And we also see that uh, generation costs differ uh, regionally, uh, yeah, regionally quite strongly. So we have good wind hotspots here in Western Morocco and uh, Eastern uh, Egypt. And uh, we also have some quite good sites here in central Algeria or in Libya. But overall, it's it's not as good as the, the solar power potentials. If we now combine these generation costs with, um, with uh, electricity generation uh, volumes, then these cost potential curves can be aggregated. And so here you see the, the generation costs and here the power that is generated at the respective costs. We see that solar PV is quite the dominant um, technology in the low cost range, followed by CSP 
generation and that wind onshore is only a minor um, for, for the MENA countries. If we compare that to, uh, if we put that into perspective, we can compare it to the gross uh, energy consumption of the EU27 in 2018, and we see that the, the overall generation potential of the MENA region uh, is, is quite large. Let's move on now to the yeah, to the key results, um, the hydrogen generation potentials. And these are shown here in the figure on the left. On the x-axis, you have the uh, hydrogen sales prices that we offered the model. On the y-axis, uh, y you have the hydrogen amounts that are supplied at the respective costs. Um, and then you see different different curves. Um, here the red lines that are horizontal are hydrogen demands uh, that we derive from uh, the uh, long-term strategic vision of the European Commission, which was published in 2018. And um, these, these lines represent the scenario results of hydrogen demands that in these greenhouse gas neutral scenarios are achieved. And there we have hydrogen demands in the European Union between uh, 1,600 terawatt hours and 2,200 terawatt hours. In gray, you see uh, European supply curves. So these are equivalent uh, calculations that we've already published um, uh, for, for hydrogen production in the European Union. And the uh, different gray scales um, or shades are uh, different uh, techno-economic assumptions for, uh, for the electrolyzer technology that was applied. And in green, you can see now um, the uh, production potentials um, for the MENA region already corrected by uh, these, this flat um, transport surcharge uh, of 21 euro. And if we compare these results now, uh, well, we, we have two, two, um, two lines for, for the MENA region, one with an interest rate for, uh, with 7% and one on the right here with an interest rate of 12%. Um, the European supply curves were calculated with 7% interest. And if we compare now these um, supply curves, we can see that only if we have equivalent um, interest rates in the MENA region and in Europe, then the, the MENA supply beats um, the, uh, the, the European supply. And um, so we have a, a, a strong increase in hydrogen supply above the sales price, price of uh, 91, or the supply price in Europe above the sales price of uh, 91 euro per megawatt hour. And uh, we see that uh, here, uh, MENA beats Europe, but if we assume that uh, capital costs in MENA are more expensive than in Europe, then the, the, the picture is quite ambiguous and uh, yeah, MENA might be even cheaper than the supply from MENA. Um, short try or maybe a little decomposition of these uh, results here, we can see two points of the respective or one point of the respective um, curves that we've already seen. Uh, with a cost decomposition, and we can see that the hydrogen supply is uh, dominated by the electricity cost, followed by the, uh, ca the, the, the uh, capex of the electrolyzer, and um, uh, the, the hydrogen transport is, has also a, a prominent role. And even though um, electricity generation in um, in, uh, in MENA is, is cheaper than in, in Europe. Um, yeah, this, this, uh, this, this, this uh, advantage um, is reduced in the future as electricity generation from re renewables overall um, get cheaper. Maybe another look on the, on the uh, electricity system that is behind these um, hydrogen supply curves, here you can see the share of um, electricity generation um, for another two points of these uh, supply curves and how the, the electricity is then used below the x-axis. And we can see that um, the 
electricity production in the optimization results is dominated by solar technologies, uh, most prominently solar PV followed by um, CSP. We can also see that um, the electricity demand within the region um, can be met easily and that there is um, a lot of uh, renewable power, uh, power generation potential that could be used for um, hydrogen production. Okay, bringing this all together, we have seen that um, the, region, the MENA region displays an enormous renewable electric, electricity generation potential that is um, mostly dominated by uh, solar generation technologies. And the question whether hydrogen exports from MENA to Europe are feasible um, remains open. This is mostly due to um, the uh, transport costs and uh, possible higher capital costs um, that uh, could be applied um, in the MENA region compared to Europe. Um, this picture could, however, change if um, it turns out that public acceptance in the European Union is quite low for um, the, the setup of renewable power um, technologies um, yeah, because uh, space is, is scarcer in, in Europe than it is in MENA. And with that, I am awaiting your questions or your comments. Thanks a lot. Um, thank you very much, uh, Benjamin, for this uh, interesting view on uh, the hydrogen production uh, in the MENA region uh, in view of uh, carbon neutrality in, in Europe. Um, um, uh, we have now uh, occasion to ask a few questions. Um, if you have um, any, please um, uh, send um, uh, the uh, question in the chat so I can uh, get it up to Benjamin or we can also, as we are a small group, uh, switch on the microphone. I would, would start with one question uh, on my side or, or even with uh, two. Um, you have um, shown here and in particular on these last uh, slides that the differences in capital costs um, can reduce um, advantages um, uh, between the MENA region and, and, and Europe. Um, so that at the end, it could be um, yeah, uh, equally costly to produce uh, in Europe as in, in the MENA region. Um, so the question uh, to you is, um, would it be um, wise for Europe or what are the arguments for, for Europe to go outside um, the, the European area, you mentioned the scarce area here, but are there other arguments um, to have uh, large imports uh, from outside uh, Europe? Or is it wise uh, to use for the hydrogen production, for example, areas like, like Spain that could be more appropriate? Could you comment on, on these trade-offs to be made uh, in view of carbon neutrality? Yeah. So. As I said, we, we've done um, similar um, similar calculations for the for the European Union um, beforehand, and which was published in 2020 already. And um, there we we found that uh, that some arguments that uh, that are more uh, that stay more for the um, production in, in Europe as well, because up to a certain degree of hydrogen. Um, generation, we can see that uh, we can we can use the the, the, the power plants, uh, the the renewable power plants in Europe, um, uh, synergetically. So, yeah, as as um, as power generation um, from renewables is weather dependent, um, we need some flexibility options. And in the future, European systems um, that there are already uh, flexibility options, but hydrogen generation and storage is one of them. So, up to a certain amount, um, I think it is it is feasible to um, to produce hydrogen in in Europe, um, anyways. However, as I said already, um, we already today, especially in Germany, we see acceptance issues. Um, with um, renewable power production 
um, especially with uh, a uh, associated with uh, wind turbines. Um, so it, it is open um, if um, a very large um, increase of, of these uh, power production facilities uh, will be accepted by the public, um, uh, especially for a energy carrier that is uh, quite quite inefficient um, compared to to others. So that that would uh, lead to, yeah, I, I think a, a stronger willingness to pay uh, to pay higher higher import prices as well. And uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks, Benjamin. Um, uh, if um, I don't I don't see any further question, but I still would have one. Um, you showed uh, the cost of the potentials, uh, let's say, and um, you uh, we saw on, on your slide um, that uh, the the cheapest hydrogen, yeah, this one, the cheapest uh, production is at first uh, with photovoltaics, and then CSP while wind comes in late. Um, now, uh, if we think about uh, important amounts of electricity being produced, um, uh, if um, only PV is is used as as the cheapest source, uh, can it create uh, tensions in the electricity system? And would it be wise, nevertheless? Uh, you mentioned flexibility in the grid. Would it be wise, nevertheless, to to go to some technology mix in order to avoid um, the problem for for the grids for the grid in case of larger production of electricity? Okay, so um, here we can see that the, the solar PV potentials are the most, uh, the, the cheapest, followed by CSP. Um, however, and, and uh, wind is only a minor in, or, or is more expensive in these cost, uh, cost potential curves. But if we have a look on the actual um, uh, system that the Dana tile provides uh, or, or says that is um, the most beneficial um, to, provide, um, to provide hydrogen. I think these uh, at these points here it could be um, it could be done with uh, PV only, but the optimization or, or the optimizer chooses to um, to to do a combination of um, CSP and photovoltaics and to to a certain degree and in some cases even wind, and this is because um, yeah PV is only available at certain hours in a day. CSP offers the chance, um, which is used here as well, um, to store um, uh, to store um, the, the, uh, the the electricity in form of heat and supply it later on, and uh, yeah, small amounts. And th I think this is important. So we need we need uh, some kind of storage technology um, if we if we have um, these systems with a high high solar um, inputs um, and, and uh, only very little wind inputs. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Benjamin. Um, as time is advancing and we lost a bit of time at the beginning, um, I have to end questions here. Um, let's move on to the second presenter. Um, normally, this would be um, Dr. Yi Bowen, uh, but the uh, presentation will be given by Dr. Hu if everything uh, works fine. Um, Dr. Hu, could you please uh, open your presentation and uh, start? The title of the presentation is Long-Term Power Expansion Model with Intermittent Renewable Energy, a Multi-Stage Stochastic Optimization based on Nested Benders Decomposition. Dr. Hu, please give a trial. Okay, uh, thank you, Wolfgang. Uh, I will show my screen. I can see your screen if you, yes, this is perfect like that. You okay. can start, please. Thank you very much. Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, Uh, hi everyone, I'm Shu Jing from Center for Energy and Environment Policy Research. Dr. Ibo Wen was unable to attend this seminar due to some matters. Uh, he entrusted me to send uh, the sincere apologies to all of you. Uh, so uh, I'm very honored to do this presentation for him. Uh, uh, so okay, let's 
get back to this research, uh, we focused on the long-term renewable electricity planning. Uh, we all know renewable energy plays a key role in migrating climate change and promoting the energy transition. In this context, we address two crucial consequences for uh, planning the electricity transition. First, uh, substitutional more complex uncertainties in variable uh, renewable energy. And uh, second uh, is a requirement to coordinate extensive transmission investment with newly located government uh, generating facilities. Uh, these features combine uh, to present a major modeling challenge, both for countries that have a liberalized electricity market, uh, where long-term plans are needed to support subsidy policies. Uh, as well as for those countries which have uh, uh, retained central planning. Uh, so uh, this page shows the framework of this work. Uh, in this research, we construct a uh, multiple stage stochastic uh, mixed inter model to cope with the power generation expansion uh, problem with intermittent renewable facilities. Uh, it integrates short-term unite commitment uh, into a long-term generation expansion planning framework uh, with uh, yearly investment decision for both uh, power generation and uh, uh, and uh, transmission ca uh, ca capacities. And the scenario trees uh, uh, method is introduced into the framework uh, to describe the uncertainty of uh, wind power and uh, uh, photovoltaic outputs. Uh, this allows this stochastic model to simultaneously char characterize the uh, seasonality, uh, intermittence, and uncertainty of the renewable energy. The major challenge uh, comes from the large number of branches uh, for each node in the scenario trees, which combine to greatly uh, increase the scale of the model to overcome the uh, computational challenge. We develop a modified decomposition algorithm based on stochastic dual uh, dynamic interc programming. Uh, so we first present a conventional uh, deterministic power generation expansion model. Uh, it considers uh, uh, synergy uh, and intermittent renewable production. Uh, we have made the following assumptions. At the spatial level, this model divides the whole target area into several regions according to resource uh, endowment. Uh, geography location and uh, power demand. And uh, seven power generation technologies are incorporated into the model. Uh, and uh, uh, the power flows are determined by the energy balance, so the voltage is not considered. The power flows of a particular line is assumed to be constant within a typical day. In addition to the dimension, of the investment paired. Several days are sampled uh, to represent four seasons in an investment paired by historical data. Each typical day is further uh, separated into several stages to denote the subday operating process. Uh, as with the Composition of the model, we divided uh, we divide the constraints into three parts: uh, generation, expansion, dispatch, and uh, transmission. For each uh, generation technology in each uh, investment pair, new construction with upper limit uh, or retiring is possible. Uh, new generating units uh, units will also need to meet reserve constraints and uh, 
a minimal percentage renewable energy generation requirements uh, in the dispatch model, the energy balance need to be satisfied for each hour. We have uh, modeled uh, a variety of different generation technologies. For example, uh, the output of variable renewable generation technology uh, uh, changed over time as their uh, capacity uh, factors change. Thermal power generation can adjust it its output level by startup and shutdown. Uh, in the transmission section, the new construction uh, of transmission lines and uh, the power transmission at the moment uh, are consider uh, considered. The objective function incorporates our investment costs operating costs and uh, uh, penalty costs. We contrast the above deterministic model with a, a stochastic model in order to see the value of more detailed and uh, ex explicate modeling of uncertainty. We apply the snail trees model at uh, the intraday level, which uh, uh, at which each time, um, each uh, at each time step can uh, repre uh, represent several minutes or hours, depending on the specific calculation uh, capability and uh, the required occurrence. Uh, specifically, a typical day is wide, uh, is divided uh, into several stages, and each stage has several scenarios well, with different outputs of wind and solar. As shown in this figure, we assume there are each stages for a type of day. In a specific stage, each uh, scenario is indicated by a no node uh, with uh, corresponding probability. Uh, we, we also define a, a, a virtual scenario with prob uh, probability equal one before the first stage. Uh, each node in stage, uh, each node in, uh, sta is, is in stage greater than one has only one ancestor node, and each node is uh, followed by a set of children nodes. We assume th that the 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 the, the scenario trains uh, 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 satisfies stage wise independence in our model. Uh, under each uh, under each scenario, uh, the decisions uh, variables on the micro temporal scale are different with the change of the output. Uh, of wind and the power generation, uh, the thermal power dispatch, and uh, uh, and, uh, and 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 uh, uh, interregional uh, power follows should be adjusted uh, to ensure the balance of the power system. Uh, as with the deterministic model, the unite commitment occurs in every sub J stage, but the power of flows stay constant in a type of day. So the uh, mm, multiple stage stochastic model is de uh, developed as an extension of the specific specification for the deterministic model. So they are very similar. The main difference uh, of, the mo uh, of the model is uh, uh, multiple scenarios and the transfer of states between the uh, scenarios. Uh, in the stochastic model, the total cost as well as the objective, uh, uh, objective of the policy constraint are represented in the form of the uh, expectations. So, uh, the specific meaning of the constraints will not be explicated. Uh, 
uh, the model can be uh, extended in terms of number of branches or investment pairs to improve accuracy and expand uh, the temporal scope. And uh, the decision variables will also increase accordingly. Uh, so with increased stage uh, uh, dimensions, the stochastic program will become challenging to solve, especially with the integral variables. Therefore, uh, a, a highly efficient algorithm is essential. To, uh, to cope with this, we develop a modified uh, decomposition algorithm inspired by the Dell dynamic programming. Uh, stochastic Dell uh, uh, dynamic programming and uh, uh, stochastic Dell uh, dynamic integral programming. Uh, uh, in our model, we modify the algorithm proposed by uh, so, uh, to uh, a model appeared nested so stochastic uh, pro problem at the uh, micro temporal scale. Our model is a uh, mm, ma uh, metro paired dynamic investment optimization problem. And with a macro uh, scale, our model is nested with a, a stochastic power dispatch optimization at the micro temporal scale. Uh, uh, we also find a paper uh, 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 written by Lara et al. Uh, they you used a similar method to deal with net, net, net metal uh, scale optimization problem, but it's a deterministic model. Further, we apply an acceler uh, acceleration strategy uh, to face method uh, to obtain the effective cards faster. Uh, and uh, next, we apply the above formulation to the power system of China. Uh, in this figure, the vertical bar, bar shows the extra uh, installed cap capacity indicated by the stochastic model compared to the deterministic model in 2040. Uh, the capacity of supercritical power generation uh, in the three northern regions, uh, uh, we know these regions, uh, the wind and solar are relative uh, more concentrated. Uh, 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 so uh, so uh, the capacity uh, is greater by 33.8 gigawatts, 24. Point, uh, point 0.1 gigawatt and 14.8 uh, gigawatt respectively. Uh, this is a result of uh, the stochastic model recognizing the greater peaking requirements in these regions with high uh, intermittence. The greater peaking role is indicated by the lines on the chart uh, showing the annual utilization of all thermal power generators uh, decreasing by 7.7% uh, nationwide in uh, 2040 uh, in the stochastic model. Although both the deterministic and the stochastic model are calibrate, calibrated to the, to the same uh, expected value, uh, random deviation from these uh, 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 averages have asymmetric cost and investment implications. Hence, the difference uh, in results. Uh, we are argue that differences are uh, substantial and would justify to use for stochastic modeling. Uh, uh, turning to the other novel aspect of our uh, formulation, the co-optimization of transmission, uh, uh, the stochastic modeling has a, a relatively uh, little impact on the 
national total electricity uh, interconnection uh, values, but it has a significant impact on the regional transmission pattern uh, due to relative large variance of wind power in the north, east, and north. These regions install more peaking power, and as a consequence, the relative uh, surplus of generating units has enhanced uh, the economy of power transmission investment. For example, the value of electricity delivered from the north in 2040 will increase by approximately uh, 11% in the stochastic analysis uh, compared to the uh, deterministic model. This increase is uh, mainly transmitted to the east. Uh, uh, in, in, the, in this region, the demand is uh, greatest. And the lines connecting these two areas have increased by 8 gigawatt. And uh, uh, the value of stochastic solution is often used to express more preciously the possible value gain uh, of solving a stochastic model uh, or the cost of ignoring uh, uncertainty in chewing a decision. Uh, this finger shows the value of stochastic solution for the main cost elements. It uh, indicates that ignoring uncertainty would cause a significant increase in system costs over the planning horizon, according for 10.5% uh, of the total. The main source of the value of stochastic solution is the loss of uh, uh, load cost. This is because the uh, optimal uh, capacity of the deterministic model uh, cannot guarantee the balance of the power supply and uh, uh, demand in several scenarios of the stochastic model, especially in the northwest and uh, north uh, regions. And in order to explore the performance of the decomposition uh, algorithm, we run the planning problem use three methods. Uh, first, the simplex solver. Uh, in games. Uh, and the second, uh, the modified decomposition algorithm with Bender's card. Uh, the third, improved modified uh, decomposition algorithm with two phase method. Uh, in the uh, second and the, the third uh, methods, the performance of these three methods. Uh, uh, the, the performance of uh, the three method is shown in this figure. Uh, in these figures uh, with the CPTX solver, the first uh, feasible solution of the whole uh, problem is occurred after uh, 5.4 hour. And uh, but for the modified decomposition algorithm, a solution is obtained uh, in. Uh, three hours uh, for the input algorithm uh, with standard card. Uh, all the solving process uh, lasts 2.2 uh, two hours. And uh, to further test the performance of our algorithm, we applied the algorithm to different problem for the various macro investment temporal uh, spans. Uh, four pairs, five pairs, and six pairs. Uh, and uh, for different uh, uh, temporal spans, there are different uh, variables. Uh, uh, from the text, from the, uh, from text, we find that our improved algorithm allow us to uh, obtain a feasible solution in a relatively short time uh, with uh, uh, with uh, satisfactory occurrence in all uh, temporal spans. With the increase of temporal spans, the two-phase algorithm improves the calculation speed more obviously. Uh, this implies that 
uh, the improved uh, algorithm proposed by um, by this research is suitable for solving an um, um, latest mental stage problem and has a good scalability. Uh, 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 at last, we conclude uh, this research uh, 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 from the larger uh, scale application to China's electricity power industry. We find that the model performs well and some interesting results uh, uh, using such a model in place of a conventional uh, uh, deterministic mean value model. When considering the stochastics, the three northern regions need to uh, build uh, more thermal power uh, units as peaking resources. Uh, the results ex uh, excess power can be observed through a great inter uh, regional power transmission. Furthermore, uh, ignoring uncertainty carries a great loss of load risk with more renewable energy and depending upon how this is priced. Uh, the deterministic solution are more expensive in welfare terms. Uh, thus, so the, the value of uh, a stochastic solution is shown to be significant in both material terms and policy insights. Finally, regarding uh, computation, uh, the modified decomposition algorithm with the two phase acceleration can effectively speed up uh, the solution. Um, uh, this is my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Hu, for these interesting insights uh, in uh, modeling um, uh, climate neutrality in, in, in China in the electricity sector. Are there questions here? Um, there is one question here uh, I can see in, in the chat. Um, I will read. Um, thank you for the presentation. Uh, could you comment on the usage uh, feasibility of power storage in the two setups, uh, stochist stochastic and deterministic? Dr. Hu, please. Uh, to set up. Uh, uh, sorry, we don't set power storage in our model. Uh, so uh, maybe if uh, for further research, we could uh, uh, add uh, the power storage power storages system into our model. Uh, uh, we only consider uh, traditional um, generation technologies. Um. Thank you. Uh, quick question with answer, answer still possible. Is there any further question here? I don't see one in the chat. Then very quickly, um, uh, there is one coming in um, here. Um, uh, thank you very much for the interesting presentation. Um, there were few renewable energies in your results. So I wonder which data you took into account. So why renewables come in to small amount and what is the origin of the data? Oh, uh, uh, perhaps I didn't uh, understand uh, what, 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 what you mean. Uh, maybe uh, you want to know uh, 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 which uh, which data of uh, renew renewable energy? Maybe the, the wind or the solar data. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. We 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 get uh, we get uh, uh, all this data from a web a website, uh, and uh, uh, this website can convert uh, uh, all this weather data into uh the the uh uh, uh, ca uh 
cap capacity factors of different uh, 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 generation technologies. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, we can also uh, get this data uh, uh, according to different uh, um, uh, uh, hours. For example, uh, it uh, uh, covers uh, all the weather data from uh, from uh, 2000 maybe uh, uh, to now. Uh, so, so the main data uh, uh, about uh, uh, solar and uh, solar and wind is from the website and uh, uh, other data uh, for uh, uh, for example the uh, technical uh, 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 factors of thermal uh, uh, generation technology we get a uh, gadget from uh, the uh, a published uh, a, 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 a public books uh, 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 and uh, uh, I, 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 mm, I don't know, mm, is this answer? Yeah, uh, th yeah, thank you very much. I think um, that's uh, fine. And if uh, further questions arise, I think uh, we could exchange um, by email afterwards. So thanks, uh, Dr. Hu, for the presentation once again. And let's move on to the third uh, presentation. Um, the third presentation will be given by uh, Katia uh, Franke and has the title, or I think a somewhat modified title as compared to the agenda. So uh, Katia, please uh, make your presentation and specify uh, concretely uh, the, the title. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Okay, um, I hope you can see my slides now. Yes, perfect. Okay, uh, yeah, as uh, Professor Eichhammer already said, my title is a little bit different um, because we, um, yeah, due to um, events of the last year, but I'm going to explain that a little bit further in the end. So my title for today is uh, Climate Neutral Chinese Energy System. and um, yeah, I'm going to show you my structure. It's a classical structure. First, I'm going to um, explain the motivation for this presentation and the methods behind our results. And then I'm going to show a few results and I'm going to end with a conclusion. So why do we focus on China when uh, and why climate neutral? So uh, we can see here the annual CO2 emissions of China and the United States. And we see that in 2005, China um, exceeded the United States in CO2 emissions. So from a modeler's perspective, this is highly uh, interesting. And um, for us to calculate climate neutral energy systems from a system which is so based on coal, it's really interesting. So this is why we based our modeling on China. And then there was an event last year in September when uh, President Xi Jinping said that uh, China aims for carbon neutrality by 2060. So as China is a really huge country with a huge population and a, and a huge energy demand, this is really, really interesting for us. So um, this is why we calculated climate neutral energy systems for China. So. Uh, this is my motivation. So the research questions for this presentation are, well, um, are there enough potentials of renewable energies to cover the high energy demand in a climate neutral energy system in China? Then how is the Chinese carbon neutral energy system going to look like in 2060? And which role has the electricity system in the future energy system, uh, electricity grid in the future energy system? So these are the research questions I'm going to try to answer. <laughs> so um, for starters, um, Benjamin has already said that uh, we have a model which is Enertile and it's mainly based on the EU right now, but we are trying to focus on the world a little bit more. And maybe you know a little bit of these world energy models like polls or times or message 
and they all have their flaws. And Anatai has a really high temporal resolution because we have an hourly resolution and a really high regional resolution because it's 6.5 to 6.5 kilometers. So um, this is where we are starting. And um, what is really important for our calculations are the calculation of renewable potentials. So um, what did we do? We <laughs> put a fishnet grid with more than 12 million tiles over the world with an edge length of 6.5 kilometers. And then I um, focused on China. So China is covered in more than 200,000 tiles. And then <laughs> I calculated the renewable potentials as follows. We have a model which is called Rizogary, which combines ArcGIS and Python. And with this model, we can calculate the land utilization, the elevation and slope, the water depth and distance to shore per tile, which is really important for our renewable potentials. And we also take into account protected areas, roads, waywoods, and the electricity grid for our calculations. So the results of this Rizogary, uh, which is the available area for renewable potentials, we combine with weather data on an hourly basis. And we throw all of this in the renewable potential calculator. And this calculator then gives us the theoretical capacity expansion per tile and the full load hours and the cost expansion steps per region. We consider technologies like wind onshore, offshore, ground model PV, rooftop PV, and concentrated solar power. Um, so I'm not going to focus on NRT because uh, I think Benny did a really good job with that already. So um, for me, it is really important that we have <clears throat> a high resolution of renewable potentials. Um, the restrictions I took into account are that um, NRTIL is not allowed to expand coal power plants, nuclear power plants, or CCS due to uh, risks and costs. And um, this is why we focus on renewable. And um, as the time is so short, <laughs> I'm going to just focus on one result of NRTIL. So this is going to be the power plant use. So what is NRTI going to do in 2060 when there's not a lot of options for power plants in a carbon neutral energy system? So you have to know for my calculations, I um, made a green field approach for China. So I did not calculate from 2020 to 2060, but I just focus on 2060 right now. So, my scenario design was as follows. I had three, three scenarios. Um, one scenario was a high electricity demand where the electricity grid can be expanded unlimited from NRTI. The hydrogen demand is uh, around 3,000 terawatt hours and the electricity demand is for 15,000 terawatt hours. As time is so short, I'm going to focus on just two of these three scenarios. So if you have any further questions as to the high H2 scenario, please contact me per, via email and then I can show you a few results there. So the limited grid scenario here, we limited the grid expansion to 15% from today. So this is a really high limit, but we wanted to see what's going to happen. So uh, that's what we did. And now <laughs> I'm going to show you a few results. So my first research question was, um, are the results, are the potentials of renewable energies high enough to cover the high energy demand? And we can see here now the cost potential curve for China. On the y axis, you see the generation potential in terawatt hours. On, on the x axis, the production cost in euro per megawatt hours. Um, so for uh, 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 30 euros are roughly 230 Chinese yuan, so that you can. Uh, um, read my, my uh, slides. Um, and we can see that the uh, potential for ground model PV is really high in China. So theoretically, the inflexible demand, which I showed before, which was 15,000 terawatt hours, could be covered just with ground model PV. But what uh, Benjamin already said is that ground model PV has, of course, its flaws and an entire won't just um, put ground on PV in China and then it, it's done. So um, yeah, what uh, we see now is um, the um, 
generation in terabit hours just by ground mounted PV. So this is what Anatol does when, uh, yeah, with the potentials it has. So the highest potentials of ground mounted PV are uh, in CN2, which is in the north of China or in Mongolia. And you can see here that the most of the energy is generated in this area when the electricity grid is not limited at all. So um, for you to know, uh, the load centers are based in CN3, 4, and 5, and also in 6. So what Anatol does now is it generates a lot of electricity in the north of China, and then it expands the electricity grid by a high amount and gets the electricity from the north to the south. Um, as I have already said, the uh, problem with uh, ground model PV is that it can all, all, only generate electricity by day. So what do we do in the night? Enatai um, does uh, install a lot of batteries for this so that night hours can be covered with batteries. And also it produces hydrogen. So um, thanks to Benjamin, we now have a hydrogen grid in, in China. So Enatai can um, export hydrogen from CN2 to the load centers in the south and the east. And now we are going to compare these uh, the, um, this results with the results uh, what happens when the grid is limited. So this is what happens. Um, you can see now that the uh, NRTI builds a lot more uh, ground model PV in regions where the potentials are not very high. So therefore the generation is lower in these areas because the potentials are not high, because the fluid hours are not high and the capacity which can be installed there is also not high. Um, but as the grid is limited and it can't um, transfer the high potentials in CN2 to the south anymore, it has to do anything. So um, what does it do? It expands the um, ground model PV installations in the south as far as it can. So uh, I think this is highly interesting. Mm. So um, now I'm going to focus on wind onshore. This, um, these are a few uh, maps which are a little bit different. So here you see the potential usage. What does it mean? Well, as I've already said, we calculate theoretical potentials for renewable energies on tiles. So this is a usage of NRTI of the um, theoretical potentials. So you see in the north of China, in the Inner Mongolia and also in CN1, uh, that the potentials are highly used. So um, up to 100%. And in the south where the potentials are not that high, um, yeah, it does not export them so much. So, Again, what happens when we uh, limit the grid? Well, as we have seen before with ground model PV, NRTIL expands the um, potentials also in the south. So uh, I'm sorry that the blue, shades of blue are a little bit different. <laughs> I didn't see it until this morning. So um, one is still a deep blue. And we can see here the shift from CN1 to CN2, to the south and the east of China. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, I, I really love this, this map. So um, we are now going to focus on wind offshore, which is also really interesting because in the wind offshore is quite an expensive renewable energy. So when Enatel has the opportunity to expand the electricity grid and do whatever it wants, it does not build a lot of wind offshore. So I marked it with a, a little red uh, square there. So that is the only wind offshore that is built in Anatile. You can almost not see it really. So um, because it has so many, so much uh, potentials in the Northern regions and can um, generate so much ener energy there that there's no need to expand any wind offshore potentials because as I have already said, they are more expensive than ground water PV or um, wind onshore. So what happens with the limited grid? Uh, uh, I think this is really interesting because um, 
this shows that the um, potentials for ground mount PV and also wind onshore in the region seeing three, four, five, and six are not very high. So it does not suffice to cover the high energy demand in these regions. So um, Enertile has to build more wind offshore because it has no other options. It can't build coal power plants or gas or nuclear because I didn't allow it. So um, it has to expand all the renewable potentials it has. Um, yeah, um, and this is really interesting. So um, this is the, the um, yeah, most interesting part, I think, from my side, because I didn't expect this, because wind offshore is always so expensive and China has such a high um, potential for ground on a PV. So my assumption was that it would be enough, but it wasn't. So, um, yeah. So um, I'm going to show you the last of my results, which is, uh, how is the Chinese carbon neutral energy system going to look like in 2060? And here you see the electricity generation in terawatt hours. So um, of course I have a lot more results, but I limited here to just the electricity side and not the hydrogen or heat side. So here you just see the electricity generation. Um, I emphasized this because I also, this model also includes hydrogen, but we see here just the hydrogen to electricity generation and not the other part. So we can see in the high electricity demand scenario that ground model PV dominates the electricity system, but also wind onshore, because Enatile needs both electricity, both technologies to even out uh, the problems with uh, solar PV, which I have already told you before. And uh, hydrogen is used a little bit to cover um, um, draws. So when there is no wind and no PV, um, Enertile goes to hydrogen and then um, um, produces electricity via hydrogen. So in the limited quick scenario, it is no wonder that there's more hydrogen to electricity because there's no flexibility with the electricity grid. So Enertile has to get the flexibility elsewhere. And this is why Enertile produces more hydrogen and um, also more electricity from hydrogen in this scenario. We also see that the ge elect electricity generation from ground model PV and also from wind onshore is limited. So uh, for you to know, uh, SOPV is ground model PV. Uh, I forgot to change that. Um, so um, as we have already seen wind offshore, there's a lot more wind offshore generation in the limited grid scenario and less um, SOPV and wind onshore generation as the um, potentials are limited due to the limited grid. So um, I'm already going to my conclusions. So um, we saw that the potentials of renewable energy in China are theoretically sufficient to cover the energy demand more than two times for costs below 30 euros per megawatt hour, which is really low. So uh, the potentials in China are extraordinary. It's really, really high. So there is a lot of potential to transform the now coal-based energy system to a renewable energy system based. But we also see that um, the grid expansion is really important for this energy system because the limitation of the grid leads to an expansion of lesser renewable potentials with fewer full load hours and higher costs. So um, with the expansion of the grid, it's a really, really important flexibility option for the energy system because when there's no wind in one region, there's always wind in another region and uh, the system can balance this uh, draws better, better when the electricity grid is strong, which we also see in Europe or other regions. But as I've already said, I just calculated on a green field approach. So I think it would be highly um, interesting to see what happens when we include pathways for the transformation of the Chinese energy system from nowadays, which is coal-based 
uh, of around, I think it's right now, right now like 70 uh, percent um, of coal in the energy system of China right now. Um, from this heavy coal to a climate neutral energy system, um, yeah, I think uh, there are a lot of research questions not yet answered in China, and I think there's a lot of uh, yeah, modeling and things to do for us. So thank you very much. Um, I hope uh, it was fine. <laughs> um, thank you very much, uh, Katya, for these uh, nice insights. Um... Uh, in particular, through uh, these nice visualization slides, which you showed into climate neutrality in in the, the Chinese electricity sector, um, I'm just looking to the to the chat um, um, from Professor Ying Fan. Uh, she's asking um, uh, regarding carbon constraints: Is it the only way to add carbon price in the model, or do we have other types of constraints? Um, so, right. Also, so what I did was I didn't add a CO two price. Um, that's not what I did. Um, I just uh, said that Enetal is just allowed to focus on renewable uh, renewable energies to get the system carbon neutral. So, of course, you can also add a CO two price to see which price would be sufficient to get the Chinese uh, system mm. carbon neutral. But um, that that would be a lot of try and error for us. Because, uh, yeah, which price do you set? Uh, 200 or 300 euros, when will the energy system will be really carbon neutral? So but it was much more easier for me to say, OK, you're just allowed to uh, expand renewable energies and nothing more. Yeah, I think it makes sense uh, because if there is a decision to go for climate neutrality, um, there must be some kind of um, policy adding uh, here on, on carbon pricing uh, to, to make this happen, but you are in the assumption that carbon neutrality is happening and then from there you, you start to have a look. Um, I think it would be, uh, um, if, you, if you calculate pathways, it would be uh, better to include carbon prices. Yeah. So that would be a way, yeah. Um, I would have also a question. Um, I was a bit puzzled by the role of uh, concentrating solar power, CSP. Um, in Benjamin's presentation, we saw quite an important contribution. And on your slide 25, I think, um, I couldn't detect um, uh, contributions from uh, concentrating solar power while we had some from wind offshore and also from hydrogen, which um, I associate with higher costs. Can you comment on the, on the role of concentrating solar power then uh, in, in your system? Yeah, um, the, the thing is that the, um, the location of the CSP potentials is not, for the limited grid scenario, it's not a, a good uh, location because it's in the north of China. So um, it's the same problem with Guam Model PV with the limited grid uh, scenario. So that's why he goes to wind offshore because the wind offshore potentials are near the load centers and he does not have uh, the disadvantage to expand the electricity grid. So it's just a, um, yeah, a question of uh, where are the potentials, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, thanks a lot for these interesting insights as time is advancing and we have a last uh, presentation. Um, we have on and I hope uh, in technical terms, it's going to work out. Uh, the next presentation or the last presentation will be given by uh, Chinua Xu um, and it's about consumer preferences for electric vehicle charging infrastructure based on text mining method. And I hope we can uh, show the presentation. Uh, Chinua, could you please um, yeah. enter presentation mode? Okay, I can already hear you. That's a good sign. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. I can hear you. Hi, Professor, and can you see the slide? I can see the slide. Can you go into the presentation mode uh, still? Yeah. OK. Yes, now, now it's yeah. perfect. Please go ahead. Oh. OK, it's my pleasure to make this presentation. And today, my, uh, my title is Consumer Attitude. 
to electric to electric charging infrastructure based in, based on text mining. Yes, and this is my structure of presentation. First is the background. Okay, uh, maybe the topic, uh, my topic is a little different uh, with others um, because my focus on in uh, new energy we call. Uh, because we, we can say uh, by the end of uh, 2019, and the new energy we call in China reached 2.81 million. Uh, according for according for eighty according for fifty three per, um, percentage of total global uh, new energy we call so uh, according to the plan uh, China uh, will uh, China plan to China plan to uh, reach about twenty percent of total so of new energy by two thousand twenty four twenty five so we can see in the future the amount the number of New energy we call will increase fastly. Uh, this so this paper is based on consumers' comments on charging infrastructure published on public social media such as Weibo and such as the internet. So using the natural language processing technology to mine consumer emotion attitude to tower the charging infrastructure. Uh, this is the object uh, we so. Uh, we hope to, to investigate the evolution characteristic of consumers' positive and negative attitude toward, towards charging infrastructure. So uh, in this uh, study, we analyze the main factors that affect consumer choice of NEVs. Uh, also, we try to Analyze the main factor that 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 cause consumer to have different attitudes, such as the positive attitude and the negative attitude. Also, we try to analyze the difference uh, in different attitude or in different city. Uh, we now this is the literature review. Also, many scholars believe that uh, strengthening the structure of charging infrastructure will effectively promote the development of electricity. So the charging infrastructure is very important for the development of NEVs. So also we can see that uh, a lot of literature uh, focus on the consumer attitude toward the electricity, electric vehicles, uh, and the attitude toward fuel cell vehicles. Uh, the existing literature of um, uh, com, uh, usually use a survey questionnaire and an interview with the real user. Um, but uh, now uh, there are some studies they use the uh, text, they use text mining or use the, use, the, use the data mining and technology to get the same, get a focus on the same quest, question. So this is our method and the data. We get consumer comments on charging infrastructure from uh, public social media. So we analyze the consumer's emotion attitude, emotion attitude based on, the, based on our result. We try to get the evolution characteristic of consumer's attitude toward the charging infrastructure. So we, from all the uh, positive and negative attitude, we try to uh, explore what's the main problem, what's the main reason for that uh, um, negative for that and for different attitude uh, in different city in, diff in different uh, ages in different uh, group of uh, people. Uh, this is the main this is the, uh, this is the main method is a sentiment analysis. So we use the uh, NLP NLP is natural language processing uh, statement dictionary to analyze the statement of each consumer's common data. So use this data we uh, get the statement of each comments, each comments. The statement is, uh, it means positive and negative, with uh, positive comments and negative, uh, negative uh, comments. So uh, also another method is a uh, keyword extraction. extraction. We use the method to get the keyword extraction. We get the, uh, we get, we get the, biggest keywords from this method 
from this matter. So this is the topic model. Also, we uh, get a lot of comments we, from the comments uh, to get the main, to, to extract the main keywords of the, so uh, we classify the reason for consumer negative attitude from this, uh, from this method. Also, uh, topic attention. We we uh, first we get the we get the topic. Uh, second, we get we calculate the topic attention. So we the topic attention is uh, the topic uh, the topic attention is with the different weight and for different uh, for for uh, for different content. We get the attention for one topic. Okay, this is a, a basic result and. Uh, the evolution, the evolutionary characteristic of consumer attitude. Uh, so for we can see that uh, for different color is uh, positive comments, uh, negative comments, and uh, uh, the this line, this this gray line is a statement for uh, statement for the in charging infrastructure. So we get some basic uh, I, basic idea. Uh, before 2017, there are four months where the number of negative emotions are higher than the number of positive emotions. So, but after 2000, 2017, uh, there are more and more positive, positive emotion, positive emotion for charging infrastructure. So we can also, we, we can find this is a very good change. Uh, second is the topic model. Topic model, we get the, uh, use this model, we get the number of topic is six. We get uh, from all of the comments, we get the number of topic is six. Uh, so, okay, okay, we try to investigate the factor, the factors that cause consumers negative attitude. And uh, such as we get some, that uh, the results show the charging inconvenience and uh, rich analysis. Uh, and uh, uh, nexity caused by long by long distance travel and then turn on the air conditioner. So from this one, we get the different. Uh, okay. From this one, we get the uh, the, the, can, the attention consumer attention of different topic. So we can see that the, the convenient charging is the biggest uh, demand of consumer for charging infrastructure. Uh, yes, we can see that the charging method of PEV. Yes, we can see the line for different. We are, uh, uh, with time, we can see the blue one is the biggest. So convenience charging is the biggest demand for consumer. And for different for others, uh, we can see that the second second is the charging difficulty. Second, the third one is the. Uh, private uh, private charging pile installation. Also, we analysis for on the diff on the difference in attitude of city with different uh, development level. So this is the first tier city and until first tier city to fifth uh, fifth tier cities. Also, in different city, we can see a lot of uh, different <laughs> ideas. Uh, Um, also, we can see for the first level, for the first tier, first level city, and the uh, uh, the, the consumer sentiment is the is the lowest, and for the five for the five tier city, the consumer uh, sentiment is the high is the highest. So also we can see it's a very interesting result, and uh, oh, we have some uh, analysis. Uh, further, also we can see in the uh, in the in the attitude of city with different uh, develop, development level. Also, we can see the main factor that cause the negative attitude in first tire in, in first tire level and new uh, and the new first new uh, new first tire level and second tire level was the same. Is installation installation of private Charging pile. Uh, also, we can see the main factors that cause the negative attitude in third level and four level cities. Uh, the problem of charging method. They focus. They, 
the potential in the focus on charging method. Uh, the main factors in the negative attitude in fifth uh, in, in fifth tire level is the price is the price of charging tire and the charging time. So the key so the key problem for different uh, for different city is uh, are different. Also, this is the idea. Uh, we get some basic uh, basic conclusion. So uh, the result shows that the first the vast majority of consumers have a positive attitude and a positive attitude have the charging infrastructure with time uh, before. So only in uh, only in four months before two thousand seventeen. There are more negative attitude than positive attitude. After 2017, and the with the structure of charging infrastructure, most consumer most consumer uh, are satisfied with the with the charging demand. Okay, second for the for consumer with negative attitude, they mainly focus on charging method, driving reach, installation of private charging pile performance short, uh, shortcoming of electric electric vehicle bridge analysis and the charging difficulty and the third is the main factors that that cause consumer negative attitude as the inconvenience and the cost increase of charging uh, caused by the caused by a lot of reasons so also uh, based on this uh, based on this model we get some uh, basic uh, attitude and uh, preference for the consumer for the consumer also in the next step we try to uh, get this um, basic idea with other factors with other variables and get some uh, result in depth in depth okay Thank you. Many thanks. Sorry, I just was uh, muted. Thank you very much, Jinhua, uh, for this uh, presentation and also for these insights into the methods um, uh, with uh, sentiment uh, analysis here and uh, natural language uh, processing, very interesting approaches which help us to get deeper insight while in former times uh, this was more relying on, on surveys which are more more uh, costly more tedious to organize so very interesting are there uh, questions here uh, on this uh, presentation i don't see any in the chat for the moment uh Chinua, i would so, sorry um uh Chinua, i would have one question on on my side um, you mentioned the different tiers for, for, for the cities. And for me, it was not totally clear how this was defined, uh, the differences between first, uh, second, uh, and so on, fourth, fifth uh, tier. What was the definition for, for those differences? Could you once again explain this? Okay, okay. Uh... Uh, okay, we collect uh, all the all comments from uh, on the internet and these comments from different cities, from different letter from different cities. We uh, we divide it into different level cities, and we can see the first level cities the attitude is different with the other the other 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 cities. So we try to uh, we try we. So we can see maybe the um, maybe the com the education and the common the income of the consumers are different for the, these cities, and but but it's just uh, mm. I we just it's just a kind of guess. But we at the second we will uh, investigate it further, and uh, so what's what why is it? And we try to mm. explain it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you. And um, um, uh, a second question on my side, uh, you applied this to, to China, but in principle, this method can also be 
um, quite well adapted, uh, possibly to to other countries. Um, uh, have you looking to to this, and um, do you think uh, this can be relatively easily adapted to to other contexts, to other countries? So, what what was specific here for the Chinese uh, con context? Uh, thank you for your question. And uh, uh, first is maybe the main difficulty is uh, the data collection, data collection, because we collect these uh, uh, these comments from Chinese website from Chinese website we uh, try we uh, we collect this data and uh, they will get the tenth menu but for other cities for uh, for other countries maybe it's uh, maybe the all the comments are English uh, the technology is, is the method the, the method the methodology <coughs> is, there's no problem for the methodology but uh, maybe uh, we can make a comparison for China and other city, and uh, what's what's going on for the, yeah, and uh, for for different attention for different attitude for different country, uh, but uh, that's because maybe there are the problem of language, because we we mm -hmm. our our result is based on uh, tenth menu, yes maybe that's thank you. Thank you very much uh, for these uh, insights. Um, and uh, yeah, time is, is over. And I'm happy that uh, despite our technical uh, problems, we were able to get a good uh, session here. Um, before uh, closing on, on my side, uh, let me first uh, thank all the speakers here very cordially. And then I would like, if that's technically possible, uh, to ask my co-chair, Professor Fan Ying, uh, here from Beihang University, to say a few closing words, and then followed by some uh, indications um, from our session host, uh, Clemence, here about the presentations. So um, first, um, uh, Professor uh, Fan, uh, can, can you uh, can you switch on your microphone? Can you uh, come into the session here, or we still have a technical problem? Okay, okay. Uh, thank you, Wolfgang. Uh, very happy uh, to see you in this uh, special session. And uh, actually, it's a very good chance uh, for us to meet together and uh, discuss in our common topic. And uh, uh, first, uh, I would uh, thank all the speakers uh, for your very good uh, presentations. Uh, and uh, also uh, thank uh, Professor Wolfgang Kammer to uh, prepare this uh, session uh, during the last few uh, weeks. And uh, actually, uh, this, uh, all these uh, presentations are from our uh, joint uh, projects. Uh, it's a very good, uh, important project uh, from the uh, German and Chinese cooperation. Uh, and uh, we uh, could not uh, meet together to discuss our advance, uh, advances uh, during the last, um, uh, last year and a half. And so um, uh, today, uh, I'm very happy to see the new uh, progress and, uh, from our speakers. And I'm very happy to see Kazia and Benjamin here. And, uh, Actually, regarding uh, Chinese uh, non fossil uh, uh, target, uh, the, uh, we call it, uh, carbon uh, neutrality uh, target, uh, there are more and more uh, research focus on this. And some are focused on the uh, potential and the possibility, and others focus on the, uh, the past and the cost, and also the policy requirements. So, uh, 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 we uh, we like to find the more uh, uh, more um, optimal uh, path to complement this and uh, to finally achieve the carbon uh, neutrality target. Uh, so um, I'm uh, looking forward to uh, more uh, research focus on this like the mechanism design and the policy design. And uh, the new, uh, the, the newest uh, uh, event will be uh, the uh, emission trading scheme in China will be uh, normally uh, started uh, and on uh, June uh, uh, 25. Yeah, this this is true. So uh, the, uh, this uh, will be a new a new start uh, to use uh, market markets to 
uh, achieve our uh, low carbon strategy. Uh, so uh, I, I hope the, our uh, project will uh, achieve uh, more uh, uh, good results and uh, uh, look forward to see you all in the near future. And uh, so to continue our physical face uh, discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ying, uh, especially for this uh, cooperation and the chance uh, to be here together. Then I hand over uh, to Clemence for some uh, housekeeping indications uh, uh, to the presenters here. Yes, thank you. So first of all, thank you all for your very interesting presentations. And concerning the slides, um, please upload them on the dashboard just after this session so we can have all of your slides. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it for me. So thank you, everyone. Yeah, uh, thanks a lot.